All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Hazan. So this talk, it's it's really just for fun. All right. It's a bit tinfoil hatish. Okay. I'm not gonna say do what I'm about to give the talk on. But the talk is about this. Do we trust the Wi-Fi? Okay. It came about because of this. How many of you need to be online 24-7? How many of you need to check Facebook, go on Twitter, go on Instagram, go on Slack? I still don't know how to use Slack until today, so if someone can teach me how to use Slack. Okay, this came about because my fiancé was hospitalized recently, and somehow, while still in the bed, filled with drugs, Totally out of it, she was able to take her phone, somehow, took photos of the ward, and then post it, and then put down her phone. And when you ask her, what are you doing? Huh, really? I was using the phone. <laughs> Alright, so that's how much you need to be connected. So, one of the ways that we can stay connected is to use free Wi-Fi. How many of you are using the free Wi-Fi right now? Anybody? <laughs> Yes? Are you sure you're connecting to the right AP? Sure. <laughs> okay, so about me, my name is Hazwan. Uh, prior to this, I was in the police force for eight years. I'm now back into the private sector. Okay, I was, I'm currently working in a managed SOC as a network security engineer. Okay, I don't like the term engineer. The engineer, to me, is someone who earns the term engineer. Okay, but that's the title I'm having. Okay, so we're going to carry on. So, modern realities. Do you use Wi-Fi? Anybody still using Hardline at home? Really? Am I the only one still using Hardline? <laughs> Am I the only dinosaur left? Okay. Do you use public Wi-Fi? Yes. Those who say no, are you sure? <laughs> Alright. Do you use free public Wi-Fi? Yeah. Yeah. Alright. So, why? Okay, we are all tech savvy, but we read the news, okay, we go to Hacker News, we go to all the places where all the good stuff are, okay? We know that certain things are not safe, quote unquote, unsafe. But why do we use it? It's because of convenience, right? We trade things off. One of the most common things that we trade off between security and convenience is this. Look at your phone. How many of your phones or laptop is set to auto-connect to a wireless access point? All of us, right? Okay. I just went to a talk recently. Okay, and, and the person gave a very, very interesting thing. He says, you don't have to worry about men in the middle. You just need to worry about auto-connecting to an access point. Because if you're auto-connecting, you're vulnerable. That's it. That's all you have to do. Don't auto-connect. But it's so convenient. How many of you can remember your password for your wireless? I can. I actually have to write it down in a book. Okay. That is the thing. One more thing we need to talk about is the internet. Right? So a lot of people, okay, I'm talking about Maybe not so tech savvy, but we'll look at the internet and say it's one big cloud. What's the cloud? The cloud is someone else's computer. Okay? So it's not one big chunk. They are not a whole. They are actually parts which are connected to each other. They're different nets connected to each other. So this is actually the real reality. So one of the key things we're going to be talking about today and this is the main thing, is VPN, right? So what's a VPN? What does it do? What it does not do? I'm sure you all have read articles, I'm sure you have watched YouTube videos say, secure your network, secure your internet browsing, use a VPN, right? I wish we were sponsored so I can say a name of a company that provides VPN. <coughs> Slash, you know, free quotes. But we need to understand exactly how a VPN works. So what is a VPN? VPN, virtual private network. Okay. So what does it does? It connects one machine, all right? It may be 
in a different geolocation. When it connects through a VPN to another network, it is treated as if it belongs to that network. Okay? So any connection done from that network that is remote to this local machine is closed. It's treated as if it's in the land. All right? So it's encrypted, it's closed, we treat it as it is belonging. Okay? So cool. If I use a VPN, everything is encrypted, I reach to the end, I'm safe. Uh, maybe. Okay? So this is how VPNs are commonly used. One, you're connecting to a server or a service, you're trying to get to a computer, you're using it directly, right? So this is the initial, this is how VPNs actually came about, right? But how VPNs are actually being used nowadays is slightly different. This is how VPNs are actually being used nowadays. To transport you from one area to another area. Basically, geolocking. You're breaking out the geologs. Okay? My question to you here is, do you trust the network that you're exiting into? Do you? Anybody here use a store? Okay, don't put up your hand. No need to. <laughs> right? <coughs> ah, I'm coughing. I'm not. I'm using tool. Okay? So, do you, okay, I won't say do you. If you know someone who's using Tor, <laughs> you can ask that person, do they trust the exit node? Okay, maybe NSA, don't know, not sure, maybe, I don't know. Okay, so, but that's how VPNs are actually currently being marketed. Okay, it's to move you from one location to the other. We can make use of that to do what we are attempting to do, which is this, the setup. We are going to create a portable device. I say portable, we are going to be bringing a router around with us. All right? To allow people who are traveling with us, let's say overseas, to use the free Wi Fi safely. Okay, again, this is very paranoia, very tinfoil hat thing. If you read the news recently, right, some articles are saying that. Hotels are being targeted specifically because they give free Wi-Fi to their guests. In fact, the chances of you being compromised goes higher if you go to a name brand hotel. Because that's where all the big conventions and all the big names go to. So people will naturally target those places. Alright? Make sense? Make sense? So everybody, please go to Hotel 81. <laughs> I'm not sponsored by Hotel 81 by the way. Okay? So we're going to set it up. We're going to use a compact router that can run DDWRT or if you want OpenWRT or Tomato. Okay, let's not start a religious war here. Okay, in this example, I'll be using a WR841. I, this is actually based on a very old tutorial which uses the old 703, you know, the small square ones. Okay, my initial plan was to use the MR3020 or 2030, the newer ones. But unfortunately, it didn't have the functionality that I wanted and I couldn't be bothered to compile the thing again. Alright, so at this point of time, this is the most latest image that you can get. Download it, flash it. If you don't know how to flash it, Google it or Bing it since we're in Microsoft. Alright, <laughs> so... <laughs> Alright, oh, we have to give shout out to our venue sponsor. Alright, so... Why is server stay here? It's supposed to be hidden. Okay, we're not going to set up. I'm not going to talk about setting up a server. You can use any VPN provider of choice that you trust, quote unquote trust. All right, and then you will use their services. All right. So the usage goes like this. The theory is this: you are going to a quote unquote hostile environment. Okay, a hostile networking environment. Might be, might not be. So the whole idea is, remember, we're going to move you from one location to another location. So we're going to make you exit to a location that you are more happy with, where you feel more trusted. Okay, so that's the whole idea. It's not about end-to-end -end encryption and all these things. It's just making you feel a bit more safer. Alright? So in practice, 
This is what we're going to do. So, first thing first. You're going to set it to client bridge mode. Alright, once you set it to client bridge mode, you're going to switch off any security settings that you have. Oh, wait, hang on. I'm supposed to talk about security here. Why are we switching everything off? Alright, so we're going to use the VPN to do most of the heavy lifting here. Alright, so firewalls, all this, let's switch it off. We're not going to care. Then, we're going to go and connect to the network that we are currently in by using site survey. Alright? Oh wait, hang on. Sorry. I forgot to inform something. When you set the client bridge, name your network the same as the public Wi-Fi that you are going to connect to. Okay, because you are actually going to do a repeater at the next step. Alright? So, site survey, find it, connect to it, it will do all the setting for you. You don't have to do all this gateway setup, all this malaki in on it. Alright? Connect it. Then from client bridge, you switch it to repeater bridge. Alright? Now, you will be able to repeat any traffic that is connected to your, from your router to the host network, okay? But, it's still not secure. We're going to create a virtual interface so that we know we are connecting to our device. Alright, so we're going to create a virtual interface. Name it whatever you want. You can say fantastically secured AP or whatever you want to call it. Alright, connect it, enable, alright, then set it to bridge, and then you connect to it. Next part, you're going to set your VPN client. Right? In this case, we're going to use OpenVPN right? because it's very easy. They'll give you the whole text files on how to set up. Connect to it. Copy that. Uh, if you're wondering why there's red color things all over the place, this morning I realized that all my keys were there, so I had to <laughs> cover it up. Uh, yes. Not everybody will have free access to me. So, just copy all the settings that's inside the log file. Copy all the settings in. Alright? And then once you're done, you are basically good to go. There is actually one thing which I forgot to talk about, which is DHCP services. Those of you who do networking will actually realize that, hang on, there's no DHCP service. How am I going to connect to the router in the first place? I'm not going to be carrying a laptop with me all the while. Alright? So there's actually, you're supposed to set everything up at home. And then if you look at this, this is your virtual interface. The virtual interface is where you're going to connect to it once you have it set up. So you're actually going to create another DHCP service, bind that DHCP service to this virtual interface. So when you reach the location to go into the admin setup, you connect to the virtual interface. And then you go into admin. All right? Because the actual admin is in client bridge. He doesn't know how to connect to you. He's just receiving things. He's not going to talk up. Alright? So, I forgot to put that in. Please remember, no DHCP equals to no IP address equals to no connection. Okay? That's it. So, was that a tad overkill? Yes. Should we be doing this? I uh, don't know. Alright? We live in a world where we can't really take things for granted, all right? Where things that are supposed to keep you safe end up being used to, you know, exploit you, like certain antiviruses, which I will name, all right? Certain things that we take for granted, like it's a named hotel. I'm sure it's safe and secure. Nope. That's where most of the attacks are happening. All right? The whole idea of this is just for you to think about it. Know that there are certain ways that you can protect yourself and those around you. And to have fun. Maybe you can find out another way, a more simpler way of doing things. And just need to remember one thing. There is no such thing as 
100% secure. Alright? When I was in the force, a lot of... Okay, I'm now a member of the public now, right? <laughs> right. So it's about members of Hollywood, right? I'm a member of the public now. Right? So when I was in the force, members of Hollywood like to say, why still got so much crime? Why still got things going in and out? Why still got people doing this? It's very simple. The only way to prevent crime, prevent things being smuggled in and out is to close our borders. 100%. Nothing goes in, nothing goes out. But is that practical? Is that convenient? No. Right? I can do... My fellow colleagues can stop every single car coming in through the checkpoint and do 100% check, which includes taking out the tire, checking into the wheel. <laughs> okay? Okay. I've dismantled a motorbike to its components before and then give it back to the person say, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right? So, convenience, security, right? We need to balance it out. So, the whole idea is if we don't feel that safe, we can increase the cost of getting to us. But we can never be 100% safe. All right? So, again, I basically ended my talk. It's very quick, very, very fast. Again, this is not a new idea, it's not a new concept. This talk was based on things which other people have worked on before. So, these are my references if you are interested in. Alright? Oh, I have 13 minutes. Wow. What am I going to do with 13 minutes? But, but there's not much to be asked. Please don't ask. <laughs> okay? So, is there any questions? Don't ask me about my job. I'll cry. Yeah. Uh, HTTPS. Ah, okay. HTTPS. Yes. 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 I feel like I'm at work now. Okay, yes. <laughs> what does it buy you? What does it buy you? What does it buy you? I think you connect to a well-known point because if you trust the certificate... Ah, okay, yes, yes, trust. Okay, um... Anybody knows how... how the sets work and how set revocation works? <laughs> okay, it's not so much as being issued the set, it's more about the revocation of the set. Okay, so... I'm sure you have read about how a root certificate provider got compromised <coughs> and then basically all the certificates that was created based on that root certificate was basically no-go, alright? So, it's... SSO is good. It is it, it's, it's there for you to to make sure that you trust the person and it also ensures that you have a secure connection. Okay, it encrypts the line. The question now again goes back to trust. Do I trust the network that I'm in? Do I trust that I'm connecting to the AP that says who it is? Do I trust that the certificate is saying who it is from? Alright, so it's, it's again, you can be 100% sure, you can be 100% safe but yes, SSL, sorry, HTTPS is always preferred over going plain HTTP. Alright? So normally, HTTPS through the VPN out. Quite no, safe, right? Oh, yeah, sure, fine. Fine. The VPN is just more of a belt and braces. Okay? SSL is thin forehead. This one is helmet, you know, with a jumper and everything. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. HTTPS. Except for when your HTTPS gets compromised. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to go and do overtime. Right. Any other questions? No? No? About devices, what brand to buy? No, I'm not being sponsored by them. Any questions? No. No? Oh, wait. Oh, I was about to shut down. <laughs> yeah. Regarding uh, setting up your own security. Sorry? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, setting up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's say you're doing that to a hotel. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you are trying to get uh, local devices to connect to your own AP. 
Yeah. Yeah. Directly with the hotel, right? Yeah. So um, now, let's say the hotel has uh, active uh, security team. Uh-huh. And they detect you doing this. Uh-huh. Might they mistake you for trying to hijack your Wi-Fi? No. Okay, so the way a repeater bridge works, your individual devices are still transparent to the network. The network still sees them as individual devices. The only difference is that you're going through a VPN through their network, that's it. Yeah, no, but let's say uh, let, you're doing this with hotel rooms. Oh, you're talking about they detect a rogue AP, yes. another SSID inside. Yes, that's right. Most hotels, I don't think they'll care. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 okay, 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 sorry. Backtrack, backtrack, if my boss sees this, I'm going to die. Okay, backtrack, backtrack, okay, I'm a second engine, not supposed to say it. Okay, if my client sees this, hello. Uh, how do I say this? Okay, as a response team, I will go question mark if I see a rogue AP with the same SSID as my legit devices or close enough to my legit devices. So like, for example, one, two, three, four. I, two, three, four. Capital I, uh, people not sure, very fast, just click, right? Very close. I'll go like, eh? Then I'll start hunting for it. Uh. So um, there's a risk that you'll get a knock on the hotel room door asking <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Unlikely lah. <laughs> because, okay, I tell you why it's unlikely is because we all use hotspot. They know we use hotspot. If everybody in the room, in every, okay, one, let's say one in ten person who is staying in the hotel room turns on their hotspot, there's going to be a lot of rogue APs. Right? Again, are they going to go down and actually knock? And the potential of me actually catching someone versus me going down and wasting my time getting a complaint letter. Complaint letter, good case. Complaint letter, good case. Any other question? Yeah. Uh, why did you disable client's uh, isolation on your AP? Wouldn't it make more sense to enable it in case you can't? Ah, okay. AP, you're talking about AP isolation, right? Yes. Okay, okay. That's a very good question. Because initially, I wanted to turn it on. But I was like reading through the actual wiki of DDWRT. The way they explain it looks very weird. So I'm actually going to test it out and do a proper thing and post it online. Like a blog post. According to the wiki, AP isolation is supposed to be used to make sure that the because it was initially designed for a router with LAN ports and Wi-Fi. So the plan was initially for that these two networks they don't talk to each other. That was the main plan. I was also thinking, shouldn't this also work for the virtual and then this one then has a DHCP service, so it's netted, so you only see one, so it's so-called protected through the net. I'm probably going to try it out, and if it works, I will update the talk and I'll post it out and say that, yep, nothing works, we can add another layer of even more security by putting a shield in front of us on top of the helmet and everything else. <laughs> yes, it actually does make sense, but if you look at DDWRT's wiki, the way they explain it made like, then I won't be able to push through. Yeah, but I think it should honor the beginning. That's what you're trying to say, right? Yeah, that's my first thought also, but I haven't tested it out because the based on how the previous people did it, based on their tutorials, and I tested it out, it works without setting it to API solution. Yeah, any more questions? Yes. So, what is the risk in using the uh, VPN provider? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, anybody still remember the name of the article? Can forward to me. Okay. So, what is the risk of using a VPN provider instead of you hosting it yourself? Okay. Um, so, some VPN provider, if you read it, read online, will say, "We do not lock you. We do not lock any transaction. We do not lock any connections or whatever thing do. They do. <laughs> and if my warrant is long enough." Take enough, and I throw it at you. You are going to give me those logs, All right? So I think there was a case recently, right? Right. So they gave the warrant. Antam, sorry, sorry, I'm using English. Wipe the guy until they complied and say, yeah, yeah, here's the logs. 
But when they sell their service on their site, they says, no, we do not keep any locks. Then the question goes to, what locks are you actually giving them? Right? Again, this is going to paranoia territory. So let's not go there. Do go there. Visit, holiday, then come back. Yeah, but that's... Again, but if you go... You can go online. There's a subreddit on VPN providers. And they actually rank, like, what's good, what's not good. Dodgy ones, then... But it's good. That's good. Okay? That's it. One last one, no? I'm sorry, I'm out of time. We could talk later on if you want. Alright? If that's all, thank you so much for giving me your attention and time.